What's up, guys? Welcome into episode 10 of the Neutral Zone Rewind. Yeah, uh, my name is Mitchell Porter. I'm an assistant captain for Kent, and I'm alongside Terrence Checkett, captain from Ohio, who's filling in for uh, Rylan today. And let's get it uh, right into the Beaumont Blast, which was a women's only tournament. We saw a mixture of teams, especially, uh, but let's go through the results. Uh, MSU Green's team took down the mixed team 7-1. to one. Akron would then take down the white side of Michigan State 6-4. to four. MSU Green would have a little intra-squad scrimmage, basically, but it still counts. 8-1 uh, to one the final score, Green beating white. Then the mixed team would take down the Zips 5-3. to three. The Zips would then get revenge. Uh, they'd get their first... Uh, sec- sorry, second win of the day, 6-2 to two over the green side of Michigan State. And to finish out the day, we had a 5-3 to three victory for the mixed team over MSU White. There was not much to talk about from this tournament. Uh, I mean, it's great to see uh, our girls in the women's division just ball out, get more, you know, exposure, more experience in this league. And, uh, yeah, uh, so we're going to move on. Well, oh, one thing real quick. I thought it was definitely interesting um, that the mixed team was so successful against uh, Akron, but then not so much against MSU Green. And then in the end, Akron ended up beating MSU Green. So that's just a little bit of uh, kind of back and forth results that uh, happen a lot in dodgeball. I think it's interesting to see because when you think of new leagues starting up, you usually see like the best teams would always win the worst teams. Like you can see that difference. And I think it's already great that the women's side is already as competitive as the men's side. Yeah, there's definitely a whole lot of parity. Yeah, so uh, after the Beaumont Blast, we uh, had a three team South Oak showdown. It saw the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Uh, Northern Kentucky and the Red Hawks of Miami fight off against each other. And it started off with a route from Ohio State 5 to nothing over Northern Kentucky. Miami, with what is probably the upset of the season, uh, we'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, Miami with a 4-3 to three win over OSU. Terrence, do you have any uh, comments on this? Um, well, my first comment would just be a little bit of context for the league. Um, not that one player makes all the difference on the court, but OSU was without um, MVP contender Nick Kemmer, um, one of the best players in the league. Definitely um, central to a lot of what they do, especially on offense. Um, so without him, I wouldn't say they're the same team, but still for a national title contender, you want to be able to definitely um, beat teams at the level of what we think Miami is. Um, even if you don't have one of your best players. Um, so I would say OSU is de- disappointed in that result no matter what. If you're Miami, I don't want to take away from that win uh, whatsoever. It's a huge win for them. Um, OSU without Kemmer is still one of the best teams in the country, um, if not still deserving of that top power ranking spot. So it's a huge win for Miami. Um, kind of like the next step in their development, I would say. They've started to play... Uh, around teams like BG, Akron, uh, Akron um, and you guys in our region. But that next step is taking down teams like OSU and uh, Cincy. So it's a big step for them. Um, we got word that Max Edling and Cole Ginocchio both had huge days for them. So, yeah, good for the Red Hawks, especially at home. Yeah, and then they would finish off that tournament with a 6-1 six, a six to one. Uh, beating down of Northern Kentucky. And we were talking about Miami. You know, I felt like I've said this all year. I feel like they're a team that everyone constantly underestimates and then everyone gets blown out or at least a really good game from them. Like uh, I'm interested, at least from a Kent perspective, to play them at the first round of the ODC. Oh my God. Talk about a first round (laughs) matchup. That's going to be awesome. I mean, it's not any better for you guys. You have to play Akron, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, we can but, we can preview ODC and MDC a little bit later on. But uh, yeah. so yeah, huge win for Miami. Um, more experience for NKU. It's good to see them getting to more tournaments. Um, but moving into um, the main event this weekend, which is in the eyes of many the most entertaining tournament of the whole season. Um, I personally tend to agree with that sentiment. Um, JMU hosted Beast this past weekend. Um, 
And the teams in attendance were Penn State, the, the whole East Coast, Penn State, JMU, UVA, and uh, UMD, plus um, UC and uh, my team, Ohio. And then JMU also was able to field a B team. So there were a lot of good matchups going on. I'll go through some of these results. Um, first off, to start the day, Penn State won a thriller against UC. Um, I didn't see the end personally, but I saw clips and then I heard it. Hunter Stewart went crazy at the end of that game with a couple catches to secure that uh, last point for them. Um, and on the other court, uh, we beat UVA in overtime. That was, uh, that was an incredible game. Um, right after that, uh, we beat JMU four to three OU, um, UC beat UMD three to two Penn state beat UMD five to two UMD beat JMUB seven to zero JMU beat UC in overtime three to two. That was another, uh, incredible game. I was able to commentate a little bit with Shadid. <laughs> Um, and then towards an excellent the end of the commentator day, as always, Terrence. <laughs> thanks. And then towards the end of the day, um, Ohio beat Penn State three to two, JMU beat UVA two to one, and UVA beat JMU B four to one. Um, records on the day: OU went three and zero, JMU went two and one at their home tournament. UC, PSU, UMD, and UVA all went one and two. So, a lot of different results. Um, I would say big takeaways would be, not to be biased, but um, my team had a pretty good day. Uh, it's definitely something that we've been looking for. Um, we needed a 3-0 and day against some good competition, and when you're able to do it against the East Coast, in the East Coast, it's, uh, it's a good feeling, some good momentum for us. Um, overall, JMU, I'd say they had a solid day. Um, they were able to pick up close wins against UC and UVA, and then they lost a close one to us. So definitely not a disappointing performance on their home court, although I'm sure they would tell me that they would have loved to go 3-0. and um, UC, Penn State, UMD, UVA, one in two days. Um, I don't know, just pretty average from all of them. UC was missing a few of their top guys, like Isaiah Montgomery and Ian Bartholomew and Wes Peters. Um, and then Penn State uh, beat UMD, lost a close one to us, and then, uh, oh, okay, so their record was wrong on this sheet. They're, they went two and one on the day. So Penn State had a pretty good day other than a barn burner towards the end um, of the tournament versus us where it really could have gone anyway. Um, so, yeah. I would say one major takeaway for me personally was that UVA is not the team that I thought they were. Um, they put up close games against three great teams um, or two great teams, and then they beat um, JMUB. But going to overtime with us and then taking uh, JMU on their home court down to like the last two minutes, it was still a close game. Uh, definitely a, um, a lot to build on for them. I was definitely impressed with what they brought couple new arms this season um yeah i think it's interesting like we look at the east coast and we always talk about how not that there's a lack of competition but there's a lack of differentiating uh competition especially when you look at the michigan and the ohio regions like i'm curious to see what this jmu team can do at nationals especially um as they've had some up and down performances, like they'll play great against the best teams in the country. And then I don't want to say they'll fall flat against others, but they don't seem to be their best. I just, it's in, it's interesting to see how this Dukes team will do heading up into nationals. Yeah. I mean, as, as it usually is for JMU talent is not really an issue. It's more so just um, for them. It's been finishing close games. These past couple tournaments, they've been in, five one point games um in their last five games and they were only able to win one of those so i mean you can they're they're right there against the best teams in the country they're just as talented they have everything that they could possibly need um they just got to start putting it together getting a little more consistent um but i mean they're a scary team for sure i they lost I mean, two first-team All-Americans, that's hard to recover from, Evan Eschenberg and James Turner. But I would honestly say that this version of uh, JMU Dodgeball is one of the most well-rounded teams that they've had. Um, 
their like nine through 12 guys are really solid, maybe more so than last year. Um, and they had a couple of rookies putting in work. So we'll see. Yeah, they just need to gain a little momentum going into nationals and they can be a super scary team. Yes, I, I completely believe so. Um, and we'll up uh, we'll give a little shout out to the upcoming tournaments. The next one we have up is a uh, Cornhusker clash that's between Nebraska and UWP. They played earlier in the year, and the Cornhuskers uh, dismissed of UWP pretty handedly. So it'll be interesting to see what will happen down in Lincoln. Uh, then we had the ODC that's coming up uh, well, MD, on the 20th. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry. I apologize. But MDC is actually first. MDC is this weekend. Oh, so I did is... not know the date for that. So that's my oh, fault. Good. Sorry. Yeah, so that's going to be, I'm not sure if it's Saturday or Sunday, but same weekend as Cornhusker Clash. Um, yeah, MDC is going to be very interesting. Um, to, yeah, the, I guess at the first glance, you might, think MSU GV are competing for it all day, but you never know with these trophy tournaments, anything can happen. So that'll be interesting. Um, expect a preview article coming out in the next couple of days. I think Tony Stumpo has been putting in some work on that. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you were talking about ODC in two weeks. Yeah. So ODC is uh, two weeks. Uh, it's on the 26th, I believe it's at Cleveland state. Uh, 24th. Did I write? Okay. Well, I guess my information is incorrect. I apologize. Um, but no, ODC will be interesting. I mean, this is probably the most competitive Ohio region we've seen ever. No doubt. I'd, I'd like to make. Uh, we have we have some very interesting first round matchups, as you said. You guys play Akron. Uh, Kent plays Miami. Uh, UC plays. No, not UC. Uh, BG plays OSU. Ohio State. Yep. Um, do you have any predictions, opinions for this ODC upcoming, Terrence? Um, I'm going to stay away from predictions <laughs> just because I'm biased, but um, I'm super excited for it. I would agree with you that I don't know if there's ever been this much parity in the Ohio region. I mean, we just saw literally three days ago the number six team beat the number one team or number two team. Um, so you just never know what's going to happen. And I don't think anybody can deny that teams like Kent and Miami are leaps and bounds ahead of what they were even last year, but mm -hmm. especially compared to like two years ago, well, Kent, especially compared to last year, but yeah, even Miami has gotten way better. So um, even if they don't get it done in the first round, well, they're playing each other, but teams like that, if they don't get it done in the, in the first or second round, it's just overall as a tournament it's just going to be so much more competitive those good teams aren't going to be getting those kind of like uh i guess bunny hills early on in the tournament that they can kind of coast through so these first round matchups are going to be a lot more interesting yeah uh it'll definitely be interesting definitely expect a preview article about it coming up uh maybe next week the week after that uh, but then we move on to March. We have Akron War, which is going to be going back to its original format as a two-day tournament. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. I be I don't want to get my dates wrong again, but I know it's the middle of March, so that's all I I'm going to say. They were looking at the 15th and 16th. Okay. Uh, and then after that, we have Women's Nationals. Uh, that will be on April 6th at Miami University. That will be the third tournament hosted by Miami this year. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're getting the accreditation, the shout-outs that they deserve, especially for this Miami squad that, as you said, is leaps and bounds from last year. Uh, and then uh, we have Nationals coming up. That's middle of April. That's at OSU. We'll have more to talk about, about that later. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if um, another tournament – pops up somewhere I'd say like late March just teams that didn't make it to war and want to play one more time before nationals so mm -hmm. I would also be on the lookout for that but yeah we've gone almost 15 minutes so we'll wrap it up here thanks guys for tuning in to episode 10 of the neutral zone rewind I'm Terrence Checkit and Mitch Porter is with me yeah we'll see you next time see ya